what is going on everybody my name is nico and welcome back to another pokemon scarlet and violet vgc video today i want to break down what i think the best paradox pokemon are now i've already talked about paradox pokemon i think you should use i've done some breakdowns of paradox pokemon that i think are really fun to use today we're actually going in and doing a tier list we're going to break each one down and just talk about you know what I think is going to be really good at the start of VGC series two. So that way people kind of have an idea of what to start building teams around. So if this is your first time here on the channel, make sure you are subscribed for more videos like this in the future. We are trying to hit the goal of 5,000 subs by July. I think it's a super obtainable goal. So any like comment and sub is appreciated, but let's get into it. So I've got us over here on the tier maker. And honestly, I don't think there's any D tier paradox Pokemon. I think all these Pokemon are usable to some capacity. I think they're all very decent Pokemon uh just some are definitely better than others immediately what i'm gonna put in the d category is coridon and maridon right we can't use them in the format it doesn't matter they are considered paradox pokemon but we're not talking about those right now right so we'll start off with great tusk and i just recently made a moveset guide for great tusk i've been messing around with it a lot on different teams because i think it's a really solid option right now for countering things like iron hands which is super popular uh garganacle poison type is super common right now and i feel like uh, Iron Hands plays into a lot of those very well. Uh, Arcanine seen a lot of play, and I definitely think that uh, Great Tusk is a great option for that as well. So I think Great Tusk for me right now, as it sits, is like a B tier because it's kind of a weird Pokemon where like it, it, it almost needs booster energy to be like as powerful as you want it to be, but it can perform without it just to a lesser effect. Uh, and booster energy just seems to be working better on other Pokemon like Marine Moon, uh, Iron Bundle. Um, I'm even seeing it on Fluttermane occasionally, uh, Iron Moth is getting it here and there. So for me, I think it's like a B tier Pokemon. I think it's like, it's good. And maybe as the season progresses, it could maybe move into an A tier. Um, but it's, it's up there. It's one of the better ones. Um, and I really only think there's like one S tier, uh, of all of these Pokemon, right? Uh, Slitherwing. Slitherwing's pretty fun to use. Um, I don't know that it's like the best of the best, um, but I think I would be willing to give it a B tier. I think it's pretty fun with like first impression. Um, Fire Terra is really good on it. Um, and it just hits really, really hard. And the first impression rotations are really cool with this Pokemon. I think it's pretty solid. Um, Brew Bonnet. I'm going to have to put it in C. I don't think Brew Bonnet's bad. Uh, which is why I didn't go any lower than like a C tier on this list, right? C tier is like middle of the road Pokemon. Uh, I think Brubon, it's good, but it just feels like a worse Amoongus. Now, if you're running this more offensively, I could see this being better. Um, but in terms of it being like a support Pokemon, I do feel like this is kind of just a worse Amoongus. You lose the regenerator ability. Um, and it, it, yeah, I mean, if you're looking for a more offensive option to Amoongus, this is it. it it's a valid option. You can bring it on teams and have success with it. I just don't think it's like up there. I feel similarly about Screamtail. Like it's a very situational Pokemon. I see it run on a, like a lot of Parish Song teams, a lot of Trick Room teams. And I think that's like fine. I think it works very well in certain scenarios. I think it's a good support Pokemon as well with access to like quick Thunder Waves and things like that. Um, but I, it's not like up there, up there. Fluttermane, I think, is our first A on this list. I think Fluttermane's pretty solid. It's not as good as we were anticipating it being just because of how frail it is uh, and just the ability to bring, like, any Steel type or really any physical attacker and pretty much one-shot it unless it's Focus Sash is pretty big, right? So I think Fluttermane's still a very good Pokemon, especially if it gets set up. Uh, but it's not like the we everybody was worried about this Pokemon I even made a guide on how to counter Fluttermane because they, in pre series one everybody was using this Pokemon and it was just a dominating force Sandy shocks um I'm gonna put this in C it's another one that's good but like it, it's only good on situational teams that I've been seeing it run on right it just doesn't see a lot of play it's got a kind of an awkward typing um and it gets handled by like iron bundle and stuff like that very very easily uh it it's not a bad pokemon it just it's very situational and it's not as easily implemented onto teams as a lot of these other paradox pokemon are roaring moon i think is another a um it's pretty frail like it's really easy to just one shot this thing uh, but the damage that this can put out and its access to Tailwind being a very fast Tailwind setter, much like Kilowattrel or Talonflame, things like that. Um, it's just a really solid option, especially with like Terra Flying Acrobatics and Booster Energy that we've been seeing so much of. Really solid. It does also have access to Dragon Dance, which can make it a threat. So there's a couple different ways to play Roaring Moon, and I think it's definitely one of the better Paradox Pokemon. Uh, Iron Treads just feels like a worse um, Great Tusk. Like, I, I don't think... 
it's really all that worth running this over Great Tusk. I feel like Great Tusk is just all around better. It's got a little bit more access to some more powerful moves. And I, I, I don't think this one's bad. Again, it, it can work on teams. It's just not one of the top uh, Paradox Pokemon. Uh, Iron Moth, I'm going to put into B. I think this is a fun Pokemon. It's very powerful with like its heat waves, its sludge waves. Uh, it can tear electric discharge if you're running it against like uh, an electric team, like a lot of rain teams are running around. But there's also really cool tech where you can make Fluttermane slower and run like choice specs on uh, Fluttermane and then uh, use the booster energy to make Iron Moth faster than Fluttermane and Acid Spray and then just set uh, Fluttermane up for success. So right, this is a really, really fun Pokemon to use and I think it definitely has some valid use cases as being an offensive sweeper or like a setup pokemon for other powerful sweepers like fluttermane uh really really solid pokemon uh iron valiant is like i think it's pretty good in singles like a lot of people are really liking it in singles but it's so frail and so easily knocked out um that it's just it doesn't see so much play in vgc it's just it's just kind of there um i think under maybe tailwind it would be better but we are not seeing as many like prankster tailwinds like we're not seeing a ton of murkrow anymore so honestly i think like it just it just gets outclassed by so much like i've been running azumarill on a couple different teams and just one play rough from azumarill just knocks this thing out it doesn't even get a chance right so i just it's it's there it does good damage but it's just so weak that it's it's tough to justify using it especially because it doesn't have a speed tier like uh flutter mains or like iron bundles it's just really really tough to recommend it um iron hands i think is possibly our only s tier i think iron hands is fantastic uh with assault vest fake out volt switch thunder punch and drain punch it's just a pain to deal with it's super bulky does a decent chunk of damage with fake out control and volt switch it's fantastic it's just a really good pokemon that you can really throw onto any team um and have a lot of success with it's a, just a very very well-rounded pokemon um it's it, one of the more difficult pokemon to deal with right now because of how bulky it actually is you need like a good ground type or a good fairy type right now sylveon's a fantastic option into it things like that um just a very very tricky pokemon to deal with uh, especially if you don't have a pokemon that can set a burn uh kind of kind of tough to mess around with this pokemon just very good very good you're seeing so much use of it in like top tournaments uh they're they're top cutting a lot in these tournaments they're placing first in a lot of these tournaments iron hands is just a menace uh bundle is another menace and i i want to put it in the s tier but i don't think i can quite give it an s tier like iron hands where like i think bundle is a fantastic pokemon it's so good like, if I had to put these in order, Bundle's right here in the front, and then it goes down like this. And maybe even Roaring Moon above Fluttermane. But, like, I think Bundle's so good, especially you're seeing a lot more people give it booster energy, give it, like, Protect, Icy Wind. Encore is really good on it because it outspeeds, like, everything in the format that's not Choice Scarfed or Tailwind. And you just use Encore on, like, silly stuff. And you can just keep this Pokemon rolling and keep it out on the field without having to worry about threats because nothing, everything's using, like, support moves because they are Encored, right? So um, it's a really, really solid option right now. And it does big damage with Freeze Dry. Freeze Dry is huge on it. Uh, Icy Wind to slow it down to, like, pair with Goldangos and stuff like that. It's just a really solid all-around Pokemon that I think is just going to get more and more use. I really wasn't expecting it to be as good as it is, but it just it has fantastic speed control and fantastic damage. It's an awesome Pokemon. Uh, Iron Jugulus. If I if there was a D tier Pokemon on this list, it's Iron Jugulus. I just feel like this is not... I, I mean, this is like the worst Paradox Pokemon. I think everyone can agree on that. It's just not that great. They just made a robot Hydreigon and they took away the Dragon typing and took away Draco Meteor and it feels worse, right? There are use cases for this Pokemon. I've seen like Moxie Boost has been running it with like a Quaquavel right now. Uh, there's definite use cases for this Pokemon and I don't think it's a horrible Pokemon, um, but like it is arguably the worst of the Paradox Pokemon. Finally, we have Iron Thorns. Also, arguably one of the worst of the Paradox Pokemon. Horrible typing. Um, ground type just smacks us in the face. Great Tusk just comes in and bops it, right? Um, there are use cases where, again, Moxie Boosted, believe it or not, is the one that's been <laughs> messing with this. Um, and it, it does have use cases. It's not a bad Pokemon. It's just of the Paradox Pokemon, it's arguably one of the worst. Um, the design's great. I think it looks awesome. It's a fantastic shiny, but uh, in terms of use case um it's not fantastic so there is my list i find it very interesting that most of these are like c tier i think a lot of people were worried that like 
um these pokemon would come in and just start dominating and that's really not the case and you're really not even focusing on their abilities that much i think i'm gonna make a separate video talking about that uh just because of how interesting their abilities actually work uh in the current format i think in future formats that might change but in current formats um it, like you're not focusing too much on their abilities you're just giving them normal items and sending them to work right um but here's my list leave a comment below let me know what your list looks like do you guys think that certain pokemon deserve to be higher lower let me know your thoughts if you enjoyed the video at all please leave a like and subscribe for more videos like this in the future check out the discord where people over there playing pokemon all the time and if you want to see more from me check out this video where i talk about how to use arcanine in series two i think arcanine is going to get a lot more use mainly because we're seeing a decline in like king gambits and uh annihilates i think that this pokemon is going to be a lot bigger threat it plays very well into iron hands with access to will-o-wisp things like that so definitely worth checking that one out and also check out this video where i talk about how to use great tusk in series two really cool stuff but until next time peace